stop beating. The permaculture garden is in full bloom. I With the help of the animals, we're learning to work within perfect harmony with nature. Honouring each leaf, insect and bloom. The full moon. And the morning sun. Always teaches us something new. From the animals, we learn the importance of all creatures in nature's systems. It's evening. The old Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Each butterfly and bee teaches us the importance of biodiversity and nature working as one. We're learning about the problems that monocultures bring and that by instead growing and caring for a balanced system of plants and animals, we can bring back harmony. In this garden, we've found meaning beyond being a bright and beautiful field. We've realised that it can be a pollinator garden, honouring biodiversity and protecting each insect. We're learning to experiment and research what grows well in this climate. The zinnias bloomed and flourished through the wet summer, but roses can go mouldy with too much rain. Here, bananas are prolific all year round, but apples don't fruit this close to the coast. Papayas don't ever ripen, but taste great green. Eggplants are hard to grow with all the rain, and the tomatoes always get eaten by the goats. We've found so much success growing seeds and watching the process of growth from a tiny seed to an abundant plant. We collect our seeds for next year, sharing them with our neighbours and swapping knowledge and tips. Last week, I spent two hours chatting with our friend, sitting in the garden and collecting seeds together, sharing so much more than just seeds. I've been dreaming of a time where I can rest my mind for a minute. We use organic and heritage seeds and have found out the importance of this for the earth. A lot of seeds are made hybrids, they won't produce true to themselves the next year you plant them. Commercial seeds that aren't organic can be coated in a layer of pesticides. Any insect that feeds on the flower will die and this contributes heavily to the bee decline. The ease in monoculture farming, pesticides have become systemic. They're absorbed by the seed and moved to the nectar, which gets collected by the bees and brought back to the colony. The poison then moves through the colony and kills the bees. I always sketch and plan the garden. I have so much fun using creativity and planning to decide on the perfect places for each plant. We're excited to partner with Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. We're so excited by the amount of specific and engaging classes available. Skillshare helps us focus on learning, growth and connection through creativity. If you're a creative person like us who is always trying to learn new skills, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. I've always been a little intimidated by watercolour and gouache, but we took a class by Sarah Boccaccini Meadows called Botanical Illustration, Paint a Colourful Garden with Watercolour and Gouache. I learnt so much from the course and I'm so excited to draw more plans. 
Go to our link in the description or use the code Mother the Mountain Farm signing up to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. We mulch, which protects the plants from weeds and retains moisture in the soil, mimicking a forest floor. I'm planting sweet peas to grow up the trellis. We're so excited by the community here, and we thought next week we'll answer some of your questions. So please comment below telling us a little bit about yourself or asking any questions you have, and we'll make an extra fun video. We treat the animals in the same way we treat the plants. We work with them and they work with the land. And we only treat them with natural things. We watch their health closely and learn to respect the natural balances, giving them minerals that they aren't receiving from the soil. This keeps them healthy and creates a harmonic and balanced system. Having rotational paddocks means that they have access to different foods and fodder. Certain weeds they know to eat themselves for worm control always following nature's example. They always give to their new paddock with joy and eat weeds, letting native plants regrow and caring for themselves. The ducks also follow the natural systems. They love eating full and fruit and will use the poop from their pens to fertilize the same trees. When they get sick, we feed them oregano, which is rich in vitamin E and is antibacterial. We appreciate every duck, and every single fluff bull has their place here. The boys live separately in their flower paddock, and we care for Bee, who has a feather condition that makes her unable to waterproof. Sadly, in most flocks she would be culled, but here she is appreciated for everything she does and her sweet character too. The ducks love their life here, finding worms in the rich soil, eating bountiful fruit, and having a safe pen at night. They are thankful to us and they communicate this in the most amazing ways. They bob their head in the morning, which is ducky language for I love you. And they spend hours playing with us and cuddling. After the floods, there is a lot of damage to all of the fences. This paddock was dodgy well before, 
but we've been working hard to make it goat friendly and we're excited to have only one hole left. We've brought the goats and we'll leave them here to see if they escape and find a neighbour's veggie garden and come home trotting full of homegrown lettuce and zucchinis. We have our fingers crossed that they won't find a way to jump over the fence and will instead be happy munching on fallen fruit and grasses. We came back later to find them happily munching on weeds and they came bouncing home. The new paddock is successful and we're so excited. As a fashion designer, over the past year, I've been working hard designing and sampling a small collection from a local brand's offcuts of fabric. I've been translating what I learned from nature and creating this sustainable collection. And excitedly, the final pieces have come back and they're now for sale. Normally, these fabrics would be thrown away, but instead we were able to craft a collection of patchwork garments that hold so much meaning. Hi. Surplus materials have always been considered to be a problem, but if we consider it regeneratively, they can be an opportunity or a solution. I feel so inspired by the change that we've made and designing these pieces regeneratively from offcuts has brought us so much hope for the future of fashion.
Eating from the garden always tastes so good. Food that is in season always tastes juicier and full of flavours. We always try to eat firstly from the garden or orchards, and then when we can't, we try to source things from our neighbours or local growers. This doesn't upset the system, has less food miles, and supports the community. I picked these jambu while moving the sheep to a new paddock. We also picked this jackfruit last week, and the tortillas are made just across the hills. We are in no way perfect and still have so far to come, but every small step we take to eating closer to home feels so good. The music in this video is by Indira Elias, who grew up wandering the same rainforest hills, just a few valleys over. Her music always takes us to the softest place. You can find her links in our description. Thank you for watching. We appreciate every like and comment so much. Thank you to our patrons. You inspire us in every aspect of our life, and we thank you so much for your support.